We're gonna do something different here, okay? I know this is gonna be a little bit different, but I wanted to talk about a small difference that I see all the time because I see a lot of people always getting super hot and bothered about go air handling if air equals nil. And I wanted to just take a little moment and address it just for a second, okay? So I'm just gonna have this test file and we're gonna call it test.js, okay? And let's say I have an async function, you know, foo, right? And then I have another one, uh, bar. Okay, and I wanted to do something here with that. So I'd have async function main this, and I could go await foo, and I could go await bar. Now in Goland, what would this look like? This would look something like this, uh, right, main, and it would look something like this, where I'd actually have this, right, and it would look something, you know, right? Can we agree this is effectively what it would look like? Yeah. Yeah, it would look something like this, right? And that's kind of annoying. Can we all agree that we don't like that? We like this. Typically what people always say about Go is, this sucks, this is awesome. But there's kind of a lie that you're being told right here. Okay, first off, you have some options here, right? You have some real options here. Obviously writing Go in a JavaScript file doesn't, you know, it doesn't count, but just deal with it, okay? You could do something like this, but, which one erred? Remember, anytime there's an await, an error can be thrown. You don't know. You just simply don't know. So that means if you wanted to create the equivalent behavior from Go to JavaScript, what you would have to do is something like this. This would be the equivalent. It gets even worse though, because if you had a value come out of foo and bar, right? If you had value error, uh, foo val, uh, right here. Oh no, no, wait. go does not, go does not do that. If you had these two things right here, right? Bar value and foo error, right? And then I could do something like this, return, uh, oh gosh, I have these things backwards. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. Let's just say we had something like this to, make the same thing happen in this, you would actually have to do it a bit different, right? If you had to do some sort of special error handling, right? Uh, some special error handling, right? Whatever that special error handling is, it doesn't really matter what it is. We'd have to do the same special error handling, same special error handling, I don't know, return, uh, return a null, right? We'd have to return null in both these situations. Not only that, we'd have to have let foo val be right here, which means that we're gonna have to have some sort of type number or null right? Because now you have to have like null or you'd have to do undefined, right? You'd have to do some sort of definition going on here. Foo val equals this. You'd have to define it on the outside and then make it go on the inside. You're going to have to do the exact same thing right here, right? It's like, that's kind of annoying, right? That's kind of annoying. I don't want to have to do that equals this. And then you could return foo plus bar val. But here's the worst part is now what does your return statement look like? Well, your return statement is promise or null, right? It like changes the signature. These errors not only have huge change in how your flow of code works, it also has a huge change in what your signature is going to be due to like the return value. So now you're outside when calling it also has to perform the exact same thing. It not only has to do a try catch for potential errors thrown just in case there's an error thrown because they don't know if you handle every error and maybe you don't handle every single error, but on top of it, they also have to handle like this null case that you might have to handle, right? So now it went from a two state problem to a three state problem and down here in the go land, it's not. Because what would, what would the function look like? The function will, based on whatever this is, its return value looks something like error number, right? Or int, right? And so it's going to have the same, it, it has the exact same, like, experience no matter what. And so you go into the situation without all that. It's at, like, I'm just saying, when people say go error handling is bad, you got to understand the difference. What are you comparing it to? There's a reason why JavaScript services tend to have extremely low 9K reliability, right? They're not coming in with five nines. They're just not because you have to have an intense amount of air handling everywhere. And nobody does that. Nobody does that. Every time you JSON, every time you JSON parse, you need to handle a potential error. So many people just raw dog JSON parse. I'm just saying. When people say Go error handling sucks, I simply disagree. I say it just forces you to think about errors 
when errors can happen. JavaScript, they just hide the errors. Error's not gonna happen, you don't worry. You know what the worst part about this whole thing is that at some point you have something like this, process.unhandled rejection, right? You get some sort of top level error catcher and you have to recover from that? You have to reset some state somewhere? What? I mean, good luck. That's difficult. Anyways, these are just some thoughts I have about error handling in this, because I hear this all the time. Like, do I like doing this? I don't like doing this. I think it's tedious and I think it's annoying. I think Rust does a much better job with the result object. I think the monadic approach of results and being able to morph them and and then being able to do a dot okay filter map and all the different combinations you can do is absolutely fantastic. But at the end of the day, this annoyingness right here is just significantly better than whatever this annoyingness looks like. It is very, very, very difficult to correctly program JavaScript so that you handle all error conditions. Anyways, there you go, just my thoughts. JS errors are very difficult. It's very tedious. The problem is I just don't want you to fall into this habit of thinking that some other language is bad because it immediately looks worse on the outside. I will tell you by, that at the end of the day, you will find contributing to Go easier and more reliable because it lets you know ahead of time. Ah, I got some errors I need to handle. I'll take care of these errors. Annoying, but man, wow, there's a lot of errors. I didn't realize how often code that I write can error. This seems kind of wild. I don't remember my code ever erroring that much with JavaScript. Oh, it does. It's no different. It's identical. You just don't know. You're dead. <laughs> like that's the only difference. All right, the name is I still write TypeScript all the time. I'm not saying don't write it. I, I'm just saying I, I don't love it. I recognize its weaknesses, okay? And you should recognize the weaknesses too. And then you can continue to program it. But I don't want you to be someone that's just simply ignorant or say stupid things like if error equals nil is just the worst. Is it the worst? Is it the worst? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A jet.